just want to love on you people and say you're welcome on my vlog guys you're welcome on my vlog and for all you guys who keep on returning to watch these amazing videos i just want to thank you and i want to tell you i really really appreciate you guys i really from the autumn of my heart i really appreciate you guys for coming back over and over and over again and for all of you who have subscribed into this online vlogs tv <laughs> i just want to welcome you and please stick around stay please come and stay we still have so many things we're supposed to do together we still have so many places we're supposed to go together and i really want to share my life journey with you guys so please stay and for all of you who've not subscribed to this amazing vlogs that you want to see every week please subscribe to my channel guys subscribe and welcome to the community and let's do this together anyways thank you guys for all your comments i have seen all your comments amazing comments all your advices i really really i am grateful um to talk about a few things that i've seen in the comments i know you guys have asked me if i can on gear kiswahili but guys this is a vlog and a vlog is watched with so many people from different type of continents and different type of countries and other countries do not even understand Swahili that is why I keep on mixing the languages I use on this vlog but also I use English for communication so that any other person that does not understand Swahili is able to understand the vlog by the English language ndo maana nachanganya lugha zote mbili najitahidi sana kuongea Kiswahili ili wale ambao hawaelewi Kiingereza waweze kufanyaje kuelewa zaidi but i cannot be speaking in swahili all the time for the sake of the people who do not understand swahili or do not understand swahili properly kwa sababu there are other countries that do speak swahili but they don't speak fluent swahili as the one we speak in tanzania so if i keep on communicating in swahili it's gonna be hard for them because they can't understand this flowing swahili of all the time so i have to mix swahili and english what else did i see in the comment um and guys this these are vlogs ni kwa naambia hichi sio kipindi cha kukaa na mtu ama kipindi kwamba nasema leo tunaongelea mapishi kesho tunaongelea mahusiano kesho kitu sio tunaongelea nini hiki sio kipindi these are just vlogs guys unajua sisi wa Tanzania wengi we are not used of this vlogs sisi tumeshazoea tu vipindi kama vipindi tamthilia kama tamthilia these are vlogs these are done all over the world um na it is just somebody's personal life na vitu unavyofanya siku hiyo what you do what you eat what you what you find that people can also find that is useful for them it's just enjoying life it's just a lifetime thing sio kwamba um sijui ni kipindi kwamba sio hivi na hivi hapana vipindi vitakuja kwa hiyo katika hivyo vipindi mtaniona nikiwa nimekase mmoja nimetulia na mtu mmoja na muoji kwa Kiswahili ili wote muweze kuelewa una tu oh it's another vlog I'm on this vlog unajua tu this is just something for not just for fun to enjoy and just showing you my life unajua hata mimi pia ni mwanadamu wa kawaida unaweza kumna yeye mwalimu or Rosemary hivi na hivi I really want to know what she does in her personal life come just showing you this side other side of my personal life ambazo sikuonyeshi pale insta nikiwa nakufundisha biblia ama nikiwa nafundisha mahusiano ama nikiwa nafundisha kuhusu neno la Mungu ama tukiwa tunasali na kufunga novena so this is just a, a glimpse of you to see my personal life what i do and and all those good things na kwa comment zenu mnazoendelea kuniambia na kunishauri na kunipa ideas hivi na hivi they are really helpful kwa sababu at the end of the day youtube channel yangu ni sehemu ambako nataka na wewe ujifunze na mimi nijifunze kwa mimi naendelea kujifunza kwa comments zenu na nyinyi mnaendelea kujifunza na na vitu ambavyo nakuwa navileta kwenu kwa well, guys Um and then I kufurahia this vlogs vitu vingi sana vinakuja mambo mengi sana yanakuja and I just want you to enjoy usi stress sana wewe usielewi kiingereza sijui usielewi ninachosikia tu ni maneno vya hapa na pale kama kuna mtu mmoja alikuwa anasema oh sijui hapo mimi nilichosikia ni bajaji tu bajaji tu bajaji vingine vote sijaelewa 
kama huelewi jitahidi kuelewa pale ninapokuwa naongea Kiswahili unganishe moja na moja ili uweze kuelewa nilisema nini kwenye Kiingereza hata mimi woga naangalia vlog za watu wengine they speak english in their mother tongue they speak english labda na, na kizulu ama they speak english na kichina they speak english na hivi na hivi watu wanachanganya Kiingereza na lugha zao wakati mwingine hata mimi lugha zao sizielewi lakini kwa sababu naelewa Kiingereza i can put one and one together kwenye Kiingereza nijue pale alimaanisha nini kwamba naongea haraka haraka sana I think especially when I talk English woga English yangu inateleza sababu that's what I've learned nimesoma Kiingereza mimi nilikuwa nasoma Nairobi nimesoma primaries all my life Nairobi nikaja hapa nikasoma kidogo secondary uh, alafu nikaenda kusoma Ulaya kwa yani my English I understand sio kama Kiingereza cha cha Tanzania cha kwenda taratibu taratibu my English ni ile English ya kuteleza kwa ukiniambia naongea taratibu I don't even know nitaongeaje Kiingereza taratibu like how do I speak okay should I okay ngoja tufanye mfano labda I say so guys I am going to the market today I am going to shops. I need to buy the... it is boring. Hata mimi mwenyewe tu ninayoongea inakuwa hainipi uh, confidence, hainipi nguvu, hainipi ile muamsho kutaka kuongea something. So, guys, nyinyi mnaosema kwamba naongea haraka haraka. This is how I am even though in live. Siwezi kuongea taratibu na nikiongea taratibu Nothing below Nothing above No matter how low I get Lord you are enough Nothing can separate me from your love Nothing can separate me from your love Lord you are king of I'm here to give you everything. It's my whole life that I am offering. I give it over to the King of Kings. I give it over to the King of Kings. surpasses nothing can separate me from your love nothing can separate me from your love lord you are king of kings i'm here to give you everything it's my whole life that i
myself my bottle of water because I need to sip in this thing today I need to sip on this to energize myself to talk anyway so how have you been guys I hope you've, you have been well um in relationship today i just wanted to talk about something um i thought negusie kuhusu kitu do you know marriage was created to be something very 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 important to god ndoa ni agano la muhimu sana kwa mungu ni agano la muhimu sana kwa Mungu. Mungu ametubariki na ndoa kama baraka. Na ni agano between mume, mke na Mungu. Marriage is a covenant, a holy covenant between the husband, the wife and God. So when you're getting into marriage, when you're asking God for marriage, when you are in marriage, I want you to understand it is a covenant between the husband, the wife and God. Ni agano kati ya mume, mke na Mungu. Na katika agano hilo, Mungu anawabariki na watoto. And in that covenant, God blesses you with children. So children are a blessing from God for the marriage. Not every marriage is blessed to have children, but every marriage is blessed to have children at the right time. Let's get back to the marriage life. Um, I've been hearing uh, people saying like, what is the right time, what is the right age for someone to enter into marriage, whether it's a man or a woman. Is there any right age to enter into marriage today? Is there any right age to enter into marriage today? Kuna, je, kuna umri sahihi ya kuingia kwenye ndoa leo. Sijui. But all I know from my experience is that you really, really have to be matured enough to enter into marriage. I'm going to give you my own example. I was married when I just entered 22. So I was married on my 22nd birthday. The same month. When I just turned 22, I got married. Niliolewa mwezi huo huo ambao niliingiza miaka 22. Kwa hiyo kwa ufupi ni kwamba niliolewa nikiwa na miaka 21. So niliingia kwenye hii ndoa nikiwa kwenye nina miaka 21 ndo niliingia kwenye hiyo ndoa. Kwa sababu mwaka wa 22 ndo ulikuwa mwezi wangu wa nini? Wa ndoa. When I was entering into marriage, I knew marriage was just me and my husband living in this beautiful house and with all this beautiful stuff, the TVs, sofas, kitchen stuff and all that stuff, all that good stuff for me going to make uh, my husband food, for him to be happy, for him, you know, all those fairy tales we tell ourselves about marriage. I'm going to cook for my husband. I'm going to shower him. I am going to give him presents. I am going to be this humble wife. I can't, I can't, I will, I will not be sleeping at night if I don't hold him all through the night and all that blah blah blah. That is exactly what I knew marriage was. Kwa hiyo, like me and many other people tuliingia kwenye ndoa tukijua ya kwamba ndoa ni sehemu tunaenda kupika, kupakua, kuenjoy na mwanaume, mnaenda kulala, mnakumbatiana, mnapeana mazawadi, unampikia, anapendeza and all that stuff. Kwa wengi wetu we entered into marriage tukijua ya kwamba hiyo hayo ndio majukumu yetu kama mke. Which is very very wrong. Na hilo ndo teso la kwanza nililo litesa kwenye ndoa back then. Na hilo ndo teso la kwanza linalo teso watu wengi kwenye ndoa sasa hivi. Kwa sababu ukisha pika, ukisha fua, 
ukisha mkumbatia usiku halafu baada ya hapo after you've cooked after you've washed his clothes after you've hugged him all through the night you've made him the best and best love making you could ever make what else what else and then you reach a point you have nothing that holds the marriage and it falls apart inafika sehemu hakuna tena kitu kingine kinachoshikilia hiyo ndoa kama ni mapenzi mmeshafanya sana kama ni watoto Mungu labda ameshawabariki kama ni kupika umeshapika mpaka umechoka ukaika dada wa kazi kama ni kufua umeshafua mpaka ukachoka ukaamua kusaidiwa na dada wa kazi licha dada kazi kuna ndugu anaokujaga kukaa na sisi kwenye nyumba hizi za familia kwa you have help from every other place in the house you can get help from the maid you can get help you can get help from your sisters who come to live with you you can get help from your husband sister who also lives with you so what else what next kwa hiyo inafika sehemu tunakuwa tumeshachoka tunakuwa tume, tumezidiwa na majukumu ya kuwa mama umezidiwa na majukumu ya kumsimamia dada kuhakikisha nyumba yuko safi ama wewe mwenyewe kuifanya nyumba iwe safi umezidiwa na majukumu ya kufua umezidiwa na majukumu ya kumjali and taking care of your husband lakini je hiyo pekee ndio ndoa watu wengi tunaingia kwenye ndoa ama tumeingia kwenye ndoa na tupo kwenye ndoa tukiwa na umri mdogo sana lakini kumbe ndoa ni zaidi ya hapo. Kila ndoa ina kusudi lake. Mungu ameiweka kwenye ndoa. Ni kama mimi sasa hivi hapa nilipo. Mungu atakapolibariki neema ya kuwa na ndoa nyingine. Baada ya kutoka kwenye ile ndoa miaka mingi huko nyuma kwa upumbavu wangu ulionifanya niingie kwenye ndoa na ndio ulionifanya labda nitoke kwenye ndoa sababu I didn't know anything by that time. Kwa hiyo labda Mungu atakaponibariki ndoa sasa hivi. Sasa I know exactly nini Mungu ameniitia duniani. Nini Mungu anataka niwe duniani? Nini Mungu anataka kwenye ndoa yangu duniani? Kwa sasa hivi I'm expecting Mungu atakaponibariki labda kama Mungu atanibariki ndoa nyingine, niingie kwenye ndoa nikijua ya kwamba ndoa yangu inatakiwa kuwa kwanza kanisa. Mume wangu lazima atambue kwamba mke wangu ni mtumishi wa Mungu anamtumikia Mungu. Ni lazima mimi ninapoingia kwenye hiyo ndoa mume wangu ajue ya kwamba hajaoa tu mke bali ameoa mtumishi wa Mungu. Kwa lazima niingie kwenye ndoa na kofia hizi mbili. Kwanza kwamba mimi ni mtumishi wa Mungu, lakini pili kwamba mimi ni mke wa mwenyewe. Na mume wangu anaponibeba mimi, labda kama mume wangu ni mchungaji pia, lazima naye ataingia na kofia mbili ya uchungaji na ya kwake kama mume lakini kama mwanaume atakaye nioa wa Mungu akipenda sio mchungaji ni mwanaume tu wa kawaida lazima ajue kwamba mke wangu ana huduma kwa hiyo lengo langu la kwanza me entering this marriage with her lazima kwanza i be her husband lakini pia i have to nurture the ministry she is carrying do you understand lazima mume wangu ajue kwamba anatakiwa kwanza awe mume wangu alafu pili aweze kulea ile huduma ambayo Mungu ameiweka ndani ya mke wake ambaye ni mimi sasa. Nisiingie kwenye ndoa na mtu ambaye uh, ananitamani tu mimi kimwili ama anatamani tu ile ya kujua kwamba nimemuoa mwalimu. Nimemuoa mwalimu Rosemary. Ah ah. Yaani ile sifa ya kwamba nimemuoa mwalimu Rosemary ama mwalimu Rosemary ni mke wangu. Hiyo sifa si ya kuingia nayo tu kwenye ndoa kama hajui kile mwalimu Rosemary alichokibeba ili yeye aweze kwenda kukilea. Kwa maana watumishi wengi wa Mungu wanapoolewa na wanawa, wanapoolewa na wanaume ambao sio watumishi ambao hawezi kuubeba ule utumishi ndani yao utumishi wao unaendaga kufa kwenye ndoa na wanaume wengi ambao ni watumishi wa Mungu wanapoendaga kuoa wanawake wasiojua nini maana ya utumishi wasiojua nini maana ya kubeba ule utumishi ule utumishi ule mwanaume unaenda unakufa na inakuwa ni chukizo mbele ya Mungu kwa ni lazima ujue unapotaka kuingia kwenye ndoa. Ndoa ni zaidi ya kwenda kumpikia. Ndoa ni zaidi ya kwenda kufua. Lazima kuwe kuna kitu kinachobeba hiyo ndoa. Kama mimi nimeshasema kwamba ndoa yangu kwanza itakuwa ni kanisa. Kwamba ndoa yetu kwamba ni kanisa tunamtumikia Mungu. Anajua mimi namtumikia Mungu au mimi najua yeye anamtumikia Mungu. Lazima kwanza iwe ni kanisa tunamtumikia Mungu kwa ajili yetu, kwa ajili ya watoto wetu na kwa ajili ya kila mtu ambaye Mungu anamweka kwetu ili tuweze kumsaidia. 
Lakini pili, lazima ujue ya kwamba when you are entering into marriage, your age really matters. You are 21. I told you I entered into marriage. I was 22. I just turned 22. So, technically, I went to that marriage. I was 21. Kwa hiyo, nilikuwa tu binti mdogo, very young girl. Nilikuwa sijazoea purukushani za hapa na pale, sijai kuona heka heka za kuchepuka, lamba, lamba, you know. When you are a young girl, women do you dictate your own life. You party, you hang around from one man to another, unafanya hivu, unafanya gwe. And mind you, nimeingia kwenye ndoa mimi sijaokoka, simjui mungu. Kwa nimeingia tu kwa akili zangu mwenyewe na mwili wangu mwenyewe. Kwa mba nitaenda kumpa uye buwana kiyunu mpaka basi. Na kwa dhani, walio ni follow mimi tokea mwanzo from this page. Follow zongu walo mwanzo, mwanzo, mwanzo. You remember what my page was. Ilikuwe na ituwa nini kungu wa kwanza wa kichaga. Kwa hiyo mimi hizo ndo vitu nilivyokuwa najua kuzifanya huko duniani. Na mmeona jinsi gani Mungu alivyokuwa mkuu akanibadilisha, akanibadilisha, akanibadilisha mbele ya macho yenu. Yaani ushuhuda wa kwanza wa mimi kuwa hivi nilivyo ni nyie kwa sababu Mungu alinibadilishia hapa hapa insta mliona nikikuwa kutoka hatua moja kwenda hatua nyingine. All I want to say ni kwamba Hakikisha umri unaotaka kuingia nao kwenye ndoa umekuruhusu wewe kukua na kujua ndoa ni nini. Make sure when you want to enter into marriage you are in that age that allows you to become a wife because you already know what a wife is. You already know, know your duties to become a wife. You already know the ministry you have as a wife, as a husband to your marriage. Usingia tu kwenye ndoa just because all my friends are getting married. I want also to get married. I want to wear this white gown. I want to wear this suit. Baada ya kuvaa hiyo suit halafu. Baada ya kuvaa hilo gauni jeupe halafu. Lazima uhakikishe kweli Mungu niingie kwenye ndoa na huyo mtu. Uhakikishe tena na tena na tena na tena. Je, hili ni kusudi ambalo Mungu ametaka mimi niingie nalo kwenye ndoa na huyu mtu? Ukisha kuwa na uwakika na ukaomba na ukapata amani ndi uinge kwenye ndoa. Kwa sababu uja kwambi, unenge kwenye ndoa na miaka 22, 23, 24, huja koma abadu. Mumeo kwa nachiroa kuhudi sanane, anahudi sanane za usiku mrafikiza kwa nakamba, mwana tupo kidimbu hii. Tuweza tu kidimbu huyo, mke wa mtu na pete zako za ndoa. Umeacha mbeto kaala ndani na dada, uleda zako kidimbu hii. Marafiki zako wamekwambia you are just on the 25th is due birthday. Marafiki zako wamekwambia wewe bwana kama kufanyia birthday tunaweza tumbudia. Huyo na marafiki zako wameenda zenu mbudia mnakaa huko mnakesha mkitoka hapo mnaenda after party siji wapi unarudi nyumbani asubuhi mume wako anakupiga. Kwa vitu vingi ambavyo vinakuwa vinatokea kwenye ndoa mara nyingi wakati mwingine tunakuwa hata sisi wenyewe wake tunajisababishia sisi wenyewe kutokana na kuto kukoma kiakili. Mara nyingi things that happen in the marriage, the fights and the heartache and all that and all those things happen to us because we've refused to gain knowledge, gain knowledge and grow into our marriages. We've refused. We've seen that is not our portion. We just go into this marriage na kulingana with what we see at home. We enter into these marriages kulingana what our friend says about marriage. We go into this marriage kulingana what our bodies want for our marriage. We are just there. Kwa sababu we are young, we are just there manipulated by people about our own marriages and we just take them in and we destroy our own marriages. Watu tuona tuambia fanya hiki, fanya vile, nenda hiki, fanya vile, mfanyia hivu yu mkomoe, mfanyia vile, tunaleta kwenye nduwa zetu, tunaharibu nduwa zetu kwa sababu ya akili zetu finyu, kwa sababu ya kukosa maharifa, kwa sababu ya umri wetu mdogo, ambao tumengia nao kwenye nduwa, au tupo nao kwenye nduwa, yani hatu taki kunifunza, hatu ya nyua kusudi la kuingia kwenye nduwa ni nini. Mimi bado na muomba mungu ni ema ya kuingia tena kwenye nduwa. Bado sana na muomba Mungu ni ema mpya kuingia kwenye ndoa. Sipendi maisha ya kukaa nje ya ndoa. Natamani sana na na muomba Mungu siku moja niingie kwenye ndoa kwa sababu huduma niliyokuwa nayo msingi wake mkuu ni ndoa na mahusiano. Kwa natamani nifike tena kwenye yule kama Mungu atanipa tena kibali. Lakini Mungu asiponipa kibali cha kuingia kwenye ndoa. Bado nitaendelea kumtumikia hapa hapa nilipo 
kwa maisha haya haya ya singleness niliyokuwa nayo au maisha haya haya kama nipo kwenye mahusiano na mtu au niendelee na mahusiano na mtu bila kuingia kwenye ndoa mpaka Mungu atakaposema ni wakati au wakati wako duniani umefika mwisho. Kwa mimi I'm here to tell you kama ndoa bado kama ndoa bado haijakufikia huu sio wakati wako kuanza kulalamika kupata stress kupata nini huu ni wakati wako wa kukaa na kumuuliza Mungu katika huu umri ambao umenifikisha sasa hivi Mungu na bado ndoa haijaja unataka nifanyaje naomba unitengeneze kuwa yule mke naomba unitengeneze kuwa yule mume unayetaka mimi niwe kwenye ndoa yangu itakapofika naomba unipe lile kusudi la ndoa ndani yangu tuweze kulilea mapema mimi na mume wangu mtarajiwa mahali alipo ili ndoa itakapotufikia tuweze kuwa tumeshakomaa na kuweza kuitunza na kuelea ndoa yetu kwa sababu we need to get into a place ya kwamba we need have to bring back kingdom marriages yani lazima turudishe ndoa za kimungu za watu wa Mungu watu ambao wataonyesha ndoa zinaweza zikadumu mpaka kifo kitutenganishe watu ambao wanaweza za kuonyesha kwamba ndoa zinaweza zikadumu tukafikisha miaka hamsini, sitini na sabini. Watu wa Mungu, watoto wa Mungu msiingie kwenye ndoa na watoto wa shetani. Yaani lazima ifike sehemu tukataya kwamba nataka kuingia kwenye ndoa na mtoto wa Mungu ili tuweze kutengeneza ndoa ya kimungu itakayozalisha watoto wa kimungu tuweze kufika mbali. Kwa wewe ambao hujaingia bado kwenye ndoa, huu ni wakati wako wa kushangilia kwa vigelegele na kumshukuru Mungu that I am not in the marriage now. For you who have not entered into marriage, this is the time you're supposed to be happy, praying and thanking the Lord that you're not even in, ma- in in that marriage. That you have time to pray to God to give you a, a, a kingdom man. That you have the time to pray to God to give you a kingdom woman so that you can have a kingdom marriage and raise kingdom children for the glory of the Lord. That is what you're supposed to do right now. Who mood as you kuka kujionia huruma feeling pity on yourself this is not the time of feeling pity on yourself this is the time of you creating on paper what you want your marriage to be like this is the time you're going to tell god if you're not giving me a man from your kingdom don't let me get married if you're not giving me a woman from your kingdom don't let me to get married there are some kingdom men who are still single out there there are some kingdom women who are still single out there praising the lord working for the kingdom those are the people supposed to get married to lakini kama ukiona ya kwamba oh mimi i'm not the kingdom type of girl sitaki kuoa na mtumishi wa Mungu sitaki kuoa na mwanamke au sitaki kuoa mwanamke anaye mtumikia Mungu then good Mungu atakupa kufanana na wewe lakini kama wewe unaona ni mwanaume mtumishi wa Mungu au mwanamme mwenye hofu ya Mungu mtoto wa Mungu unataka mke aliyekuwa mtoto wa Mungu huu wakati bado hujaingia kwenye ndoa this is the right time for you to ask for a kingdom husband and a kingdom wife mebeba kwenye ndoa kumbe ndoa ni zaidi ya hapo ndoa ni kusudi la Mungu kumbe kaitoju ndoa ndoa ni agano la Mungu ndoa is a covenant marriage is a covenant of god god loves and respect marriage kupitia ndoa yenu so make sure kama unataka baraka za kudumu if you want everlasting blessings in your marriage make sure you marry right hello guys happy sunday to you all Um it is Sunday. I didn't get to go to church today because I really really worked all through the night. I was just sending messages. I was just sending messages uh for prayers to people. No job, no car, no transportation, but demo tapes everywhere and it's not your fault you're not doers you're not lazy you respond to what's been modeled in front of you and you don't understand that you're following the exception not the rule you're following the minority not the majority the likelihood of you making it in this industry in the industry that you are after may be very difficult you need a backup plan but you don't want to take a backup plan because that requires process classes learning training information and you think you're going to beat the odds never noticing that you've lost an entire decade trying to beat the odds 
And so by the time you beat the odds, even if you do beat the odds, Yesterday I lost the battle Trying at all costs Oh, to keep you, baby Oh, to keep you, baby Ooh, do, do. Now I hurt so bad All I feel is sad that I lost you, baby Oh, I lost you, baby I said goodbye With tears inside Calling out your name the door behind you and now I wonder why won't you come back love me hold me need me like the way you used to do when it was just me and you don't go I need you I'll never mislead you give this love another chance take my hand and let me have Another chance Take my 
cost of battle Try and then I'll call so To keep you, babe Oh, to keep you, babe seven right now um ni saa moja usiku na nilienda saa ngapi ilikuwa saa saa nane nadhani saa nane ya saa nane ya yeah, saa nane kwa nini nimekaa sana hapo i'll give you all the juice so as i said kwamba kabla sijaenda brunch i wanted to go first buy a new book to read so before I went to brunch, I went to buy a new book to read, and um, this is the book that I got that I'm reading now. This is the book that I'm reading now. If you remember on my other vlog, I did show you the kind of I think I show if I if it's not if it's not on my vlog, I showed you on Insta Story is where we put all the wahala so this is the book i've been reading like a week and a half ago you know when i saw this cover and when i saw people who read it before they gave their review i knew it should be a very interesting book so i bought it thinking it's a very very nice book now let me tell you guys when this person I know finished reading this book, I think she rated this book 2 out of 5 or 2 out of 10, something like that, I don't remember. Now, after I got it and began to read it, in a scale of 5, I'm going to give this book a 1 for myself. Kwanini? Naipokuwa na soma chikitabu, nikagundua ya kwamba nitaendelea kukaa kwenye mapenzi ambayo hayampendezi Mungu. Nitaendelea kukaa katika mambo ambayo sio mapenzi ya Mungu. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu ya story ambazo zipo kwenye hichi kitabu. Hichi kitabu basically kinaongelea wanawake na maisha yao ya having sex. 
kukutana kimwili it basically is talking about women and their sex life so as you can see it say the sex lives of, of the sex lives of african women so it's basically talking about women and their sex lives now inside here unakuta stories za wanawake wanaosagana wanawake ambao wanataka ndoa za kuwa na wanaume wengi yani mwanamke hataki ndoa ya kuwa na mwanaume mmoja tu anataka kuwa na wanaume wengi kwenye hiyo ndoa na kitu ambacho yeye na mume wake labda wanakubaliana au mwingine utakuta mwanaume hakubali lakini mwanaume baadaye anakuja kuanza kukubali kwa sababu ni matakwa ya mke wake alafu nakuta story za watu ambao wana open marriage open marriage ni zile ndoa ambazo mnakubaliana kwamba sawa mimi na wewe tunaoa lakini wewe unaruhusiwa kuwa na mtu mwingine na mimi naruhusiwa kuwa na mtu mwingine lakini tukirudi bado sisi ni mke na mume na tunaweza kuongelea mahusiano yetu ya nje tukiwa kwenye ndoa mfano mimi nirudi nikwambie mume wangu yani leo fulani kanifanya moja mbili tatu nne tano you understand that's an open marriage naye anaweza akaja akaniambia mke wangu yani fulani leo kanifanya moja mbili tatu kwa hiyo tunadiscuss mahusiano yetu ya nje jinsi gani tunaweza tukayaweka yawe bora tukiwa kwenye ndoa zetu sisi wenyewe sisi wana ndoa so that is very disgusting lakini pia Um, katika hichi kitabu I've seen women who wants more pleasure than given to from their husbands. Yaani wanataka raha za sex tofauti na zile wanazopewa na wame zao. No more sex is between a husband and a wife and what the husband can do to the wife and what the wife can do for the husband. Kwa hiyo naturally kuandaana siyo kufanyaje kufanya vitu kama hivyo naturally. Lakini humu kuna inaongelea story ambazo jinsi wanawake wanataka kutumiwa na vitu tofauti ambavyo wanaume wao hawavitumii labda kamba za kuwavutaje sijui kufanyaje kufanya yani some sex pleasure ambazo kumbe humu duniani kuna sehemu kuna nyumba hizo nyumba ni special kwa watu ambao wanataka kwenda ku find sex pleasures sisemi sex toys zinapouzwa pana nasema sex pleasures yani humu unakuta kuna wanaume na wanawake wana ujuzi wa kufanya mapenzi kwa namna ambayo sio ya kawaida kutumia vitu ambavyo sio vya kawaida mwenyewe ambavyo wewe wewe na mume wako hamtumii labda mke wa chumbani. Kwa hiyo mnaenda huko wewe na mume wako, mume wako anaenda kwa wanawake ambao wanaweza kumfanyia hivyo na wewe unaenda kwa wanaume ambao wanaweza kukufanyia hivyo. Kwa hiyo huko sasa unaruhusu mwili wako unashikwa na mwanaume mwingine anakufanya vile anavyotaka yeye kukufanya ili you you get the pleasure of him playing you. So me I thought And then ukiacha hivyo kuna usagaji pia wanawake wanaosagana wapo humo. Um na wenyewe wanaongelea wanaongelea experiences zao za kusagana. Kuna wanawake ambao walikuwa sio wasagaji lakini katika utoto wao wakajikuta wanacheza na marafiki zao wa kike ambao ni wasagaji wakasagwa katika utoto wao. Kwa hiyo wanaongelea hizi I'm telling you it is very very draining. I remember the person who started read, did, reading this book she was saying this book is very draining this book is like this this book is, she was complaining through reading this book and I didn't understand until I bought the book myself. Mimi I think I need to mpaka mpaka maybe chapter 100 and something and i thought if i continue reading this book it is making me feel a type of way in my body kwamba i want to do something you understand it is making me feel like i want to experience some things with my body na hapo ndo roho mtakatifu akanifungulia kwamba the holy spirit say whatever you take in yourself rosemary is what you will become Whatever you take in yourself is what you will become. Kwa hiyo you should not allow anything to just come in you. Anything to just you should not read anything because if you read whatever you are reading it might transform you in a good way or in a bad way. Kila unachokisoma kinaweza kuingia kwako ndani ya roho yako na kikakubadilisha kwa uzuri ama ubaya. So when I just had the Holy Spirit saying that I said ah uh-uh. I really need to understand more about sex life. Maybe I can learn something about my own sex life. But I am not going to continue reading this book because it's keeping me away from the kingdom of God. 
and where I am in my life right now hakuna kitu chochote ninachotaka kiniweke mbali na mapenzi ya Mungu I do not want anything to keep me away from the love of God. If this book is going to stress me, I don't care how much money I spent buying this book, I am not going to read it. And I'm not going to convince anyone to buy it, to read it, and I'm not going to give it to anyone that I know to read it because this book itakutoa mbali na mapenzi ya Mungu. I don't know. That's how I felt on my review of reading this book. But if you are kwenyayo mambo ya kupenda sijui open marriages mambo ya kupenda sijui section ni nini ni nini labda it's a book for you but not for me not for my children not for my any close friends that are advise watch which kitabu wasome no but it's a really really nice book uh, the person who wrote this book there's some other pages that are really really nice i enjoyed reading them but most of the pages i think they were too much for me they might be not too much for anyone else so you can buy and enjoy it for yourself but for me i think they were too much for me including on what i do for the society preaching the word of god and praying and you know leading fasting and everything like that i think this was too much for my faith and i now began reading this book which i love i love guys i love I love one of my best books. I love this book. And I'm in page 37 right now. It's a really, really, really nice book, guys. Really nice book. Um, and, and what makes this book very nice is because it relates to me as a woman. It relates to us as African people because it's written. I think the person who wrote this book is an African author. Yeah. Peace Adzomedi. She is a Ghanaian. Yeah, she's from Ghana. So you know Africa. You know us African. We all look alike. Our things just are alike. What we do, our things, we are all alike. And things like that. We only define the languages we speak and the barriers of our countries. But we are all the same people. So everything she writes here is completely familiar from the life I've been living or from the life I've been raised or from the life I'm seeing some some of my friends being raised or some of my relatives so it's exactly what is happening to our african country and the people living in it and this is the book i'm reading right now and let me tell you guys i love it if you're thinking of buying a book to read maybe